Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do an example of how to calculate the power provided at the source, the power consumed at the load, and the power lost along the way by the wires going from the source to the load. We have three equations in order to do that. The first equation is the power supplied, which is typically the voltage times the current. In this case, since we're dealing with impedance that has both real and imaginary parts, we want to multiply the phasors, the voltage times the current, and we have to use the complex conjugate for the current. The negative in front means power supplied, because actually when we're dealing with power absorbed, that's a positive quantity, so therefore power supplied is a negative quantity. That's where the negative came from. So that's basically the complex power at the source. As far as the load is concerned, we have power absorbed there. Power absorbed will be a positive quantity, and it's typically expressed in terms of the current squared times the impedance. And in this case, the impedance has an inductive property to it because it's plus J8. Notice there's three phases, so therefore we multiply times three. And finally, we have the power loss along the way on the wires. That's typically I squared R in this case. Again, the wiring has a, a capacitive uh, uh, property to it, so therefore we need to include the impedance of the wires along the line. And there's three of them, so three times the current squared times impedance. That's considered the complex power loss along the way. So we're going to calculate that to make things a little bit easier. We're given that the voltage is 110 volts at zero degrees phase, phase angle at the source right here in the first phase. Of course, we have 120 degree differences along the other three phases. And we're going to divide that by the total impedance along that line. So we add the impedance on the line and the impedance of the load combined. And when we calculate that, we have a current of 6.81 with a uh, amps with a phase angle of 21.8 degrees in the negative. And again, that will be the line current providing the current to the load. So now let's calculate the power supplied. So the power supplied is equal to minus three times the voltage times the complex conjugate of the current. So that would be equal to minus three times the voltage. The voltage is right here. That's 110 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees, and we multiply that times the complex conjugate of the current, which is 6.81, with a phase angle of a positive 21.8 degrees, because the complex conjugate gives us a positive angle. All right, so that will be the power supplied. Let's calculate that. So we have 330 times 6.81. That gives us... Uh, minus 2,247.3 with a phase angle of 21.8 degrees. And now we're going to convert that into the real imaginary parts. So take the cosine of that angle, so if 21.8, take the cosine of that angle and multiply that times 2,247.3. That gives us 2,086.6. And then with a positive angle, J, let's see here. So we take the sine of 21.8. We multiply that times 2247.3. That gives us 834.6. We do need the negative in front because we can't forget about this negative here. So let's put a negative in front of that. And that's in terms of ohms. So let's put some parentheses here, put ohms behind it. So there we go. Well, wait a minute, not ohms. We have power supplied. So that would be watts, not ohms. <laughs> That's better. Okay, so now we have the power supplied, therefore the negative. This is the real part and the imaginary part, and it's in terms of watts. Now let's go ahead and find the power absorbed by the load. So power absorbed. And the equation we use would be 3 times the magnitude of the current squared times the impedance. The impedance only of the load. So in this case, that's equal to 3. It's a positive current squared, which is 6.81. And uh, that would be squared. And let's multiply. Let's put a bracket around that. Now the impedance 
at the load, which is 10 plus J8. Okay, in order to uh, find the right result, we probably want to convert that into a magnitude and phase angle format. So how do we do that? Let's see here, that would be equal to three times 6.81 squared times the magnitude there, that would be 164, take the square root of that, which is 12.81 the phase angle of, that would be 8, that's a 0.8, take the inverse tangent at 38.66 degrees. All right, let's see what we have there. Multiply all this out. We get 6.8, oop, 6, 8, 1 squared. Multiply times 3, multiply times 12.81. So it gives us a magnitude of 1782.2 with a phase angle of 38.66 degrees, which is, now we're going to convert that into the real and imaginary part. So we take the cosine of 38.66, take the cosine of that, multiply it times 1782.2, that gives a real part of 1391.7 and an imaginary part in the positive plus j that would be a 38.66 take the sine of that multiply it times 1782.2 and that gives us 1113.3 1113.3 and again that would be in terms of watts all right so that's the power consumed by the load this is the power supplied by the source. Now let's find the power laws along the line. Notice the numbers here, that's a little bit big. Typically it wouldn't be quite that big, but that's how it works. Power loss is going to be equal to three times the magnitude of the current squared times the impedance along the line. And so that's going to be equal to three times the magnitude of current, 6.81 squared, and the resistance along the line would be 5 minus, or I should say the impedance, minus J2. So we want to convert that into magnitude and phase format. So this is equal to 3 times 6.81 squared, and this would be equal to, that's 25 plus 4, that's 29. Take the square root of that, that's 5.2. 5.385, let's just put it down like that, with a phase angle of, that looks like a minus 0.4, phase angle of minus 21.8, all right, which is equal to 6.81 squared at times 3 times 5.385 equals, that's 749.2, with a phase angle of minus 21.8 degrees. And so that would be equal to, uh, so that would be times 21.8, take the cosine of that, equals, that's 695.6. That would be minus J and 21.8, take the sine of that, times 749.2, gives us 278.2. And again, that would be in terms of watts, because we're dealing with power here. So now what we have is we have the power supplied by the source, it's going to be negative, the power absorbed by the load, and the power lost along the way, along the lines. To make sure we did this correctly, what should happen is if we add those two parts, and let me circle what we have for results here, because, okay, so here we have the power absorbed by the load, and here we have the power lost by the lines. If we add these two together, that should add up to the power provided by the source. Hmm, let's see if that's indeed correct. So let's first take the real parts. So minus 28, 20, 86.6. Well, let's write it down. So check, let's check this out. Let's add up minus 2086.6. Add to that a positive. 
91.7 and add a 695.6 .6. and when we add that together that better be zero of course maybe very close to zero because we might have a slight rounding error but let's go ahead and do that 2086.6 make that negative plus 1391.7 plus 695.6 equals and we end up with 0 0.7 which is about zero so we're good there so far so good what about the imaginary part so we have a minus 834.6 we add to that a positive 1113.3 and subtract from that a minus 278.2 when we all add all that together so we have 834.6 Make that negative, add to that 1113.3 and subtract from that 278.2 and we have 0 0.5 which is about zero so it looks like we've got the right results and that's how you find the power provided by the source, the power absorbed by the load and the power lost along the way. That's how it's done.